Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be building an image app. Uh, as you can see we can keep scrolling and then it's going to keep generating more images. Okay, so when we reach at the bottom of the website it's going to generate even more images. Okay, so it's infinite. Uh, when I go up I can search for something else, maybe an egg. And then it's going to generate images that has to do with eggs. And then I can keep scrolling. It's going to keep showing me more eggs. Okay. I can change this to something else. Maybe mountain. Uh, mountain. And it's going to show me some mountain images. Okay. So any of these images uh, can be downloaded. When I click the download button, it's going to open this image in a new tab. Actually, not a new tab, but we can right click and then save as to download the image. Okay, so when I go back, uh, we can search for anything. And also, we have a nice scroll bar here, a nice custom scroll bar. We're going to be creating this in this video. Uh, this project is also responsive. We can view this on mobile. When I decrease the width, it's going to change the image layout accordingly according to the screen size okay so it's like fully responsive so we're using a grid for this one it makes it easier to make uh, responsive items like this okay so we don't need to do any more media query like a lot of media queries to achieve this functionality it's quite easy to implement okay so depending on the screen size it's going to display a uh, different layout okay yeah that's it for this project i'll see you in the video all right so the setup has already been done so i'm um, now we're just going to install some libraries that we're going to be using so mainly we're going to be using style components and dot env i'm going to be explaining what we're going to use dot env for okay so let's go and install that so run this command npm install react dot env and then the next one npm install style components Okay, so I've already done that. I'm not going to waste your time doing that. As you can see, I have some empty files in here. Okay, so I just have like two SVGs that we're going to be using in this uh, project. I'm going to run that in the browser. I'm, uh, to run that, just uh, do npm start to preview that in the browser. Uh, it should pop up any minute. All right, so while we're doing that, in here we're going to use create global style create global that is coming from start components okay and then we're going to utilize that by putting this into a variable const uh, i'm going to name this global style okay and then we're going to do create global style so this is responsible for styling and then i'm going to do a margin of zero and then padding zero just the usual uh, page resetting padding zero Border box uh, for the border box. Border box. Border box. It's not showing. Actually, it's not border box. It's box sizing. I'm getting confused. You want to say that to border box? Okay. So let me double check if I'm recording. Yeah, it's recording. All right. So now uh, we're doing page researching. I'm going to set the background color to a random color just to check if our style is working and then in here we're going to export the default it's not const it's export we're going to export default global style okay so to use this global style go to index.js above the app we're just going to say global style and also don't forget to import it up here okay so now let me go back to the page and refresh this as you can see we have a red background so that means our styling is working okay so enough of the background of red i'm just going to remove this and then uh, i'm going to go to the app.js so in here i'm going to create a div so this div uh, is like the main parent container so this div i'm just going to say app styled and then this one is styled uh, app styled yep so styled so this style is supposed to come from style components so you need to import styled up here 
styled it should import styled automatically i think i need to rerun this because sometimes uh, the auto completion doesn't work okay so i'm going to uh, exit this and then i'm going to rerun this again okay so let's see if it's going to work I don't know the uh, the plugins sometimes they just glitch in here I'm just going to say const app styled and then here we're just going to say styled so now it should work with auto completion okay so this one's going to be a div Okay, so I'm going to copy this app styled and then I'm going to replace the main div with that. Okay, so once I've done that, now it's time to rerun the project again because I've uh, restarted the whole thing. Okay, so yeah. So now w once everything is rerunning, I'm going to create a function somewhere here. I'm just going to say HTML. Actually, it's not HTML markup. It's up to you what you decide to name the comment. Okay, so I'm not going to be wasting your time creating different components. I'm just going to do almost everything here because there, there isn't a lot of a lot of code to write. So I'll do everything here. So in here for the markup, I'm just going to say const. I'll say this one is going to be form render. It's responsible for rendering our form. It's going to be an arrow function. So uh, arrow function like this okay so in here i'm going to return i'm going to return a form give it a class of form form okay so in here i'm going to have a class so it's going to be input control input control okay so in input control we're going to do an input and then the type is going to be text and then I'm just going to uh, paste in a placeholder. You can do any placeholder that you want. Okay. So I'll put a placeholder. And then I'm just I'm going to create a button. Uh, so this button is going to be type. It's goes to submit. Type of submit. And then the name is going to be search. So for the button, we're going to have an image inside the button IMG. So for the source, the source is going to be search. Okay, so we just need to import the search. So I'm going to say import search from. So the search is going to come from the uh, IMG. So do IMG search search.svg. Okay, so now, so that's going to be the source of our image. Okay, and for the text, it's search as well. Okay, so that's it for the form. So let's go to the uh, app styled in here. Uh, we're going to create a header. Header. Dot header. So this is the header of our page, and it's going to contain our form. And then in here, I'm going to do an h2 dot logo. So we're going to have a logo as well. So the logo is just uh, text. It's photo booth. You can use an uh, anchor tag for this one. So when you click this logo, you can refresh the page. Okay, but I'm not going to do that. You can do that if you want to. All right, so in the header, below the header, I'm going to have another container. So this one is going to be called main, main. So this one, I'm just going to name this main content. Okay, so main and then main content for the class. All right, so I'm going to save this. Let's see what we have. Okay, so now we have photo booth. So our input is not showing. The reason is because we're not calling the function. So the, the function that we want to call for this one is form render. So we want to call this function in here. So hopefully our input will show. There it is. Okay, so now let's go to... Actually, we need some fonts. Uh, so the ones I'm just going to paste in some fonts that we're going to be using in this project. So I'm not going to waste your time going to Google Fonts and download everything. 
So just go to Google Fonts and look for a font that you want and then go to public and then just uh, copy whatever link they give you. Okay, so these are the fonts that I'm going to be using. So just paste, uh, paste everything in here. All right, so now let's go to the global. Okay, so I'm just going to do some global styles like for example, the background color. So the background color is going to be hash uh, 192 two and then three two so that's our main background color so this uh, grayish color I don't know if it's really gray but yeah that will be our color and then I'm just going to paste in the font size which is 2 rem 1.2 rem okay so that, that's it for the body for now and then uh, for the logo for the logo, we're just going to have a font family of lobster. Lobster, and then we're going to have a font font size of 3.5 rem, and then we're going to do padding bottom. Padding bottom is going to be three point, actually two rem or one rem. It's up to you how you want it. And then the color is going to be white. Okay, so let's see what we got. So this is our icon now the logo actually you can use whatever you want okay so that's it for that um, I want everything to be nicely centered so let's go to the app I want to center this uh, form here right here okay so to do that uh, let's just go to the app uh, okay so in here I'm just going to say header you can select this header using a class okay so header, the height is going to be like 30vh, 30 30vh, 30 and then we're going to do width 100%, and then we're going to do display flex, flex, it's flex, okay, align items to center, just flex content to center as well. So we want to center everything, that's why we're using flex, so now as you can see everything is centered, okay. And then we're going to say flex direction to column. We want them to be in a column like this. All right. So now we have the flex direction. I'm just going to also put in uh, a background color. And then we're going to do margin bottom of 5 rem. All right. So there it is. So that's the color for the header. And then we have a margin bottom of 5 rem. Okay, so now it's, uh, we also need to style the form itself. So the form is inside the header, so I'm just going to say form. So for the form, I'm just going to do display flex as well. Okay, and then just five content to center. And then uh, for now, the width is going to be 50%. Width, 50%. And then... Uh, I'm just going to do a transition. It's going to be all 0.4 seconds, is in and is out. So we want to have a nice transition. All right. So far, so good. Okay. So uh, for the form, what do we have? Form. So inside the form, we have input control. I'm going to select this input control and then paste it down here. So we want to style the input control. The position is going to be relative because we're going to position absolute the button. Okay, so the width for now is going to be 70%. And then margin is zero auto. So margin zero auto, it means it's going to center. Okay. It's not yet centered. So we're going to find out why. Zero auto and then we'll do text align to center. So now everything will be centered again. Okay. So now uh, we're also going to use this transition as well. Okay. So now we have the transition. Okay. So now when I inspect this, as you can see, there it is showing. Okay. So now let's style the input itself. So the input itself, I'll uh, just say input. It's inside the input control. 
So for the input, we're going to give it a padding. So top and bottom is going to be 0.6 rem. And then left and right is going to be 2 rem. Okay, so this one is 0.6 rem. Okay, and then the background color. I'm just going to paste it here so I don't waste your time uh, typing this color value here. So we're going to do outline, none, border, border, none as well, none, and then uh, border radius. But the radius is going to be 50 pixels okay and then i'm going to do a drop shadow so i'm just going to do filter and then i'm going to do a shadow so it's drop shadow i'm just going to paste in the values that i'm going to be using okay so i don't want to type this one by one okay so the width is going to be 100 percent as well width 100 percent all right, so, and actually the color for this one, I want it to be white. So color, it's gonna be white. So now, there it is. So when I type, the color is white. Okay. Uh, for the font, I think the font is correct. Padding 0.6 RAM. Font family, I think it's inherit. All right. Oh, I haven't uh, specified a font that we're going to be using. So for the body, uh, I'm going to specify a font that we're going to be using. So the font, the primary one is Lunito. Uh, so go to Google Fonts and download that. Okay, so just go Google fonts. Here you just look for the font that you want, maybe Lunito, and then just get this font. Okay, so I'm just going to paste the font family in here. So that's Lunito, that's the uh, font that I'm going to be using. Okay. Okay, so now. Uh, I am also going to style the placeholder so in here. I'm going to say input. So for the input, I'm going to say placeholder. I want to style the placeholder. I'm just going to give it a white color with an opacity. So RGBA, so 2555, that means it's a white color with op uh, the opacity of 0 0.6. Okay, so now there is a nice uh, color. All right. So now, uh, 1.2 RAM for the font. Okay. Let's see if uh, we need to put anything else. Okay. All right. So now let's uh, let me see the color. Okay, so now let's do the button. Actually, I'll cut this. I can just put it in here, so I don't need to do it over again. Okay, so now let's go for the button. So after the input, we have the uh, button. So if, uh, this button is going to be uh, a little more, st more, it's going to be more styles than there's going to be more styles than the input. Okay, so I just say button. You can give this button a class name actually. Okay, so but for this one, you, it's up to you to give it a class name or not. So position is going to be absolute actually. Absolute because I want to move this button around uh, this input inside here. So position absolute, we can put anywhere we want. So right. I want to say five pixels, right five pixels, and then top, uh, do 50%. Okay, so there it is. Top 50%, I'm just going to do outline, none. Uh, I'll do border, none. Okay, 
So, um, what do I want for this button? I also want this to be centered on the Y axis. So I'm going to do transform and then translate Y. And then the, I'm going to do minus 50%. So I want it to be centered horizontally. Okay, so now it seems to be nicely centered. Okay, and also I want to display flex the image and the text. Before I do that, I'm going to give it a color of white. So the image and the text, I'm going to say display flex align items to center just five content space between. Okay, so for the image, I'm also going to give the image a padding. Uh, it's up to you how you want the image to, how you want the button to look like. Okay, so the, this is how I want it to look like. All right, so padding, outline, uh, we've removed the outline. So now let's give it a background color. So the background color I'm using for this one is in RGBA. So that's the color, these are the values that I'm using. So that's the green color. All right, so the cursor is going to be pointer. Okay, so then I'm going to target the image. So for the image, I want to give it a padding left of one RAM, so I want to, to have a space between the text and the and the icon. Okay, so I'm also going to do a border radius, border radius. So this one I'll do 50 pixels. Okay, so now it's nicely rounded. Okay, but when I click, it's refreshing the the page. Okay, so we can actually increase the font size. I think I'll increase this a little bit uh, from 1.2 to 1.3. Okay, so it's up to you how you want the font to look. Okay, so here I'll just say input A button. Font family inherit and then font size inherit like so. Okay, so there it is. So now our font is much bigger. It's inheriting the size okay from the main. I think I'll stick to 1.2. Okay, so it's 1.2 and then I'll go back to 1.2. Yeah. It looks good. So far, so good. Okay, that's it for the that's it for the header. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. We're going to be uh, fetching some images, and then we're going to style them. Okay, so now let's go to the Unsplash. So in here, you need to create an account or log in with Facebook, whatever account that you have. And then once you log in, they'll give you uh, two keys. So the, the other one is a uh, secret key and the other one is the access key. So you need those to be able to follow along in this video. Okay. So once you have done that, uh, we're going to create some variables to keep those. I'm going to say new file. And then do remember we've installed the library called .env. So in here, I'm going to create a new file. It's called .env. Okay. So for the env, I'm going to say React. Make sure you copy the same thing as I'm doing right now. React app. Okay. So make sure uh, everything you put after this, I mean, I mean everything you pu you put should have React app at the beginning like this. Okay. So the first one is access key access key uh, do not do this like access key like this make sure there's a react app prefix okay for anything that you do okay so and then I'm going to do is equals to and then you paste in your access key okay in this case I'm going to copy mine and paste mine in here so this one is supposed the access key and the secret key is supposed to be private but for this video I'm just going to show you uh, my access key just for you to follow along but you don't need 
you don't need to use my access key and you only have to use your access key once you've created an account even if you use mine it's only for demonstration purposes i don't really uh, use unsplash okay and then i'm going to paste in the secret key okay so for this one i'm just going to say react app make sure the react app preset is there and the prefix i mean and then the secret key okay so and also we are also limited i think i don't know how many requests per hour we are limited to so that's why you need to keep your key safe because if someone just uh, have your key they can make uh, i mean a lot of requests i mean and then you end up not getting access to the uh, to the api okay let's go to the git ignore so once we push this uh, to the global, to the, I mean, GitHub, we don't want the .env with our secret key and access key to be pushed on the GitHub. So we're going to ignore that. And then in here, we're going to say .env. Okay, so the git ignore is responsible for not pushing uh, other styles, other things like the node modules folder, whatever, to, to GitHub. Okay, it's going to ignore all these files in here. Alright, so that's what it's responsible for, for ignoring anything that we don't want to push. Okay, so now we have the uh, access key and the secret key uh, inside the .env. Okay, so now uh, let's try to fetch some, some data. Okay, so I'm looking for the link for fetching the data. Okay, so go to the API documentation, go to authorization. Uh, let's go to the, okay, so in here in the authorization, as you can see, to authorize, uh, to get some photos, it needs the client ID, which is your, uh, the client ID, which is the access key, the one that we uh, we copied and put in our .env, okay? So make sure you copy your access key and uh, follow the same uh, structure as I did for the .env. Okay, and uh, that's, yeah, so this is the link for the setup. I'll copy this. I'll copy this. Okay, so up here, I'm just going to say const access key. So for the access key, access key, um, we're going to do the client ID. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to say client, client, I think client ID like this. Oops, like this, client ID. Okay, access key, client ID. This goes to the access key which is goes to the access key. So we're going to use, a, to use it like this. And then to get the access key, we're going to say process dot env. So we're going to access the variables inside the dot env. Okay, so dot env, I'm going to paste in the access, uh, dot env access key. I'm just going to copy the variable name, copy the variable name, and then you paste it here, process.env react app access key. So copy the variable name and then put it here. So now we have the access key. And then I'm going to create another variable. So this one is going to be const base link. So for the base link, do you remember the one that we copied? Okay, so make sure you use a template uh, literal like this. So this is the base link for the, it's, it's right here. Okay, just copy that. And then after that, we have const. So this one is a search link. So for, this one is responsible for searching. Okay, so just paste it here. Okay, so to get that search link, you can go to the search, and then you can go uh, get the base search link. Okay, so that's that's it for now. So now let's try to get some images. 
Okay, but before we, uh, we do that, actually, I want to create a state value. So this one, uh, I'm just going to call this maybe photos, and then state set photos. Okay, so by default, I'm just going to do an empty array. So and make sure you import your state as well. Okay, so by default, the photos is set to an empty array. Okay, so uh, let's create a new function. Okay, so the function is going to be const get images. Okay, so we're going to use an uh, async for this one. Async because uh, we're going to be fetching data from the an API, so the best practice is to use async. All right, so in here we're going to say, um, well, let's start by creating a, a variable URL. So we're using let because we're going to change this URL uh, depending on whether we're searching, we're searching the data or not. Okay, and then I'm going to do try catch. So try catch while we're checking if we're going to to have some problems connecting to the database or if there's there is any error okay so in here we're going to say const response and then await so when we use async make sure we use await okay and then we're going to fetch what are we going to fetch we're going to fetch the url so this url so we didn't set to anything yet so in here we're going to say url uh, we're going to set to set that to uh, the base link. Actually, I'll do this, and then base link. So that's the base link, and then after that, we're going to do uh, the client ID, which is the access key. Access key. Okay, so we have base link and access key. Okay, so we're going to fetch this URL. So this is the base link, and then next to that, the access key. Okay, so uh, the response, and then we're going to say response, whatever, actually, I'm going to say const data is goes to whatever response we got. We're going to convert that into JSON. Okay, and then uh, below that, I'm going to say control log. And then I'm going to see what data we have. So when I uh, refresh the app and then inspect, uh, there is nothing because we need to do a use effect. Use effect. Okay, it takes in a callback function. So make sure you import use effect here. Okay, so for the use effect, I'm just going to do an empty dependence array for now. Okay, because we want to run at the beginning. So for the use effect, I'm going to call get images. All right, so there is an issue. Uh, ID is undefined, client ID. Let me see what I did wrong. Access key, client ID. Hmm. Client ID. Process TNB. Oh, so the access key is undefined. Okay. Access key. Uh, 
let me so you make sure your uh, your keys are correct okay I'll copy this again so I just changed to see if the my access key was correct all right so now if I refresh seems like we're still getting the error ID is close to undefined hmm. let me stop this and then let me go to the package JSON to see if the .env is installed uh, dependencies .env is there that is strange npm start It's raining outside. <laughs> okay, so now uh, we are, we're getting the data, so we just need to refresh the the, uh, the the website. Okay, so now we're getting the data. You, j you just need to rerun the project. Okay. Okay, so now we're getting the data, but to access the data, it's inside a promise, and then we've been arranged and in array inside. So, go to the try catch inside the data inside the data in here actually after after the data we're going to do dot then okay so we want to access the actual data and then in here I'm, going, I'm just going to say you need to come up with a name that makes sense to you okay so uh, I'll just say all photos okay so uh whatever photos i'm get whatever photos that i'm getting i want to put those photos inside the photos here okay so i'm just going to do like this set photos and then i'll put whatever photos that i i'm getting okay so like these photos i'm going to put them inside the photos uh, state value so now when I say CLG, when I say photos, we should have some values in there. And I'm going to refresh this. As you can see, we have an array. <laughs> it says there's zero files. I don't know why it's showing like that. But I'm, I'm, trust me, there's, there, is, uh, there should be something in there. But it's, it's showing an empty array. I don't know why it's doing that. But we actually have access to whatever photos we're getting here okay so for example when I do something like the CLG and then all photos in here yeah, I'll remove this semicolon when I do that we have uh, actually now it's working as you can see we have uh, those 10 photos here I don't know why it's showing an empty array here but don't worry it's going to work okay I'm going to control Z that all right, so now we're setting the photos uh, into this state value. Okay, so I'm going to remove that. So now uh, we're going to have access to the to whatever photos that we're getting. Okay, so those photos, and now we have now access to those photos inside the state value. So below here, the, below the form render, I'm just going to say const. I'm going to create another function. So this function is responsible for rendering for the rendering the images. I'm just going to name this function generated images. Okay, then I'll do that like this. And then I'm just going to uh, map. Actually I'm going to return a div first. Return Div dot content. So the the content is going to be the parent container, and then in here I'm going to map the photos which is coming from the state value. Photos the map, and then photo each photo. Okay, so uh, for each photo, I'm going to return a div which is photo. 
so it's going to be a list so what we need a key so the key is going to be photo dot id all right so inside the div uh actually if i go when i refresh this when i go to the uh, components here when i click the app as you can see our data is there in the state okay so so it was showing zero but i don't know why it was doing that but actually our data is there we have 10 photos by default okay so we're mapping those photos all right so for each photo uh, i'm going to have an image so for the image the source the source is going to be photo uh, photo dot urls dot regular okay so i'm, I'm getting those info that in, uh, the information from here so photo dot urls dot regular so you can choose any of these sizes if you want to use full regular small row whatever it's up to you so i'm going to use the regular for this one all right so after the image i'm going to do another class so this one's going to be details so for the details we have a paragraph and then for the paragraph we're going to do photo dot user photo dot user dot name something like this okay so after the photo dot user I'm, I'm going to do an anchor tag and then for the href so this is the link responsible for downloading the image photo dot urls regular okay so i'll put that link here it's responsible for downloading and then actually we're not going to have a text we're just going to have an image so the source for this one is download download uh, we need to import an icon here so the download icon so download uh, oops download okay so now with the download uh, the download icon okay download uh, that's what we want for now uh, we just need to render the data inside the main okay so in here we're just going to say generated images okay so it seems like our images are not showing generated save everything oh we're not calling this function it's a function so remember it's a function here we need to call the function okay so now as you can see we have some images and everything that we put so we have the icon and the name okay uh, we just need to don't mind about, about this error it's just a random error i don't know what's doing that <clears throat> okay so now we just need to style this this interface okay so yeah let's uh go down after the header after the header so i'm going to start styling the main content uh, so the content okay so for the content how do we want to display this so we're mainly going to be using a grid <coughs> for this one okay so we're going to do display grid and then grid template columns so we're going to repeat and then we're going to say auto fill so we don't want to specify how many columns that we want but we're just going to auto fill that auto fill and then we're going to do min max so we're going to specify the minimum width of each grid item so for me I'm, i prefer 350 pixels it's up to you uh, what you want to use 350 pixels 1fy means that 
all going to have the same size okay as you can see there they are they're showing nicely so we have one two three four so we, this will ex they are responsive accordingly okay so now uh, after that i'm going to do grid gap grid gap is going to be two ram and then i'm going to do grid grid auto rows to one fr so the rows are going to also have equal equal height so that's why we're using grid auto rows and then the width is going to be 90 percent okay and then margin margin we're going to do zero auto so we're going to center this in the middle so the width is 90 percent we're going to center that okay so now as you can see it's centered in the middle so the images are too big we don't worry we still need to do a lot of styles okay so i'm going to target the each photo i'm going to say photo uh width 100 percent not 10 but 100 display flex display flex and then flex direction to column Uh, we're also going to give padding of 1 rem. Alright, so I'm just, I'm just going to paste in uh, the background color. I don't want to write the values. And also a box shadow. It's a simple box shadow. So we have 1 pixels on the x axis, 8 pixels on the y, 23 pixels for the blur, and then the black color, and the 0 0.25 for the alpha. Alright, so in there, I'm just going to say dot image the image class and then I want to do flex to only to be more big uh, more bigger I want to have more more size than the details area okay as you can see everything doesn't look nice we're still doing this style so don't worry so after the image Actually, I'll target the image in here. I'll say width 100%, object fit, object fit to cover. So, I want the image to cover, and then height 100%. Okay, so as you can see now, everything is looking pretty good. All right let's keep going uh, after the image image we have the details so details just going to do color white and then we're going to do display flex flex and then just for content so the, for the just for content we're going to do space between Okay, space between and then padding top. It's gonna to be one ram. One ram like so. Okay, something is wrong. Details image. Let me inspect this. Inspect details display flex. I think I did a wrong spelling. Yep. It's details details so now it's looking nice it's looking pretty good you can actually uh, resize this icon here so inside the details I can target the image so the icon is an image I can just say width I can say that to 30 pixels to what or whatever value that you want okay so now everything is yeah pretty good as you can see we have a nice shadow actually we need a padding bottom so it's actually going inside here I'll do padding bottom I think I'll do 3 RAM it's up to you how you want it to look like
so as you can see we have a nice padding bottom here okay that's it for this video i'll see you in the next one where we're going to be uh, fetching more images okay so now let's work on the uh, submit button as you can see it's refreshing the page every time we click it we don't want to do that okay let's go ahead and create another function uh, above the markup I'm just going to say const handle submit it's going to be an arrow function all right so in here handle submit okay yeah I'm going to uh, give it an event I'm going to say e <coughs> dot prevent default okay so the prevent default is responsible for stopping this page from refreshing every time I click this one the search button so every time I click that uh, I'm going to go to the button the type is submit and then on click on click oops on click okay it's going to call the handle submit so when I save when I click it's not refreshing anymore okay so and also I'm going to create two state values so the, the other one is responsible for searching and the other one is responsible for for page count okay so if I go page then I'll go set page so as you can see when I go to the uh, good fix this when I go to unsplash we have a page so this page uh, is responsible for the page number for example here it says page you can increase this page count the value to whatever value that you want to so if you want more images you can increase the pages okay by default it's set to one so we have the page and set page so by default it's going to be one and also we're going to have the search query and then we're going to have set set search query something like this <coughs> by default it's going to be an empty an empty string all right so now we want to get the input value and put that value inside the search query uh, state value so I'll go down inside the input and then I'm going to say on change actually not on change I'm going to say value is going to be search query search query that's the value and then on change on change on change okay so on change I'm going to run a callback function with an event and then here I'm just going to say set search query set search query we're setting search query to whatever set what the hell is this search <laughs> search query so we're going to set the search query to whatever input is coming from the input field okay e dot target dot value dot value all right so now when I go to the uh, inspect I'm going to refresh this so when I click the app I'm going to type in something in the input as you can see it's going to it's going to be stored in our state whatever input that we put is going to be stored in our state okay so everything is working fine now let's work on the infinite scroll okay so we're going to listen to a scrolling event somehow so we're going to be using a bit of vanilla javascript in here 
um, or create another use effect use effect text in a callback function so in here I'm just going to say COG I'm going to uh, show you something we're going to say window dot inner height inner height so make sure you put uh, an empty dependence over here so it doesn't rerun every time that we scroll okay uh, let's go to the console so it's showing the height whatever height we have so oops if I I'm pretty sure there's a way to put this console somewhere here but I, I can't, can't be bothered to do that okay so this that's the height the inner height we can also uh, check for the window dot scroll scroll y or screen scroll y we can check for that so as you can see that's the value there <coughs> okay so we're going to be listening we can also uh, add some values we're going to be listening for the inner height uh, and the scroll y okay so, uh, so let me show you something again so we have document dot body dot scroll height okay so it's going to show the scroll height here okay so what we're going to do is we're going to check if the inner height and the scroll y is greater than or equal to the to this uh, body scroll height okay and then we're going to do something if that is true uh, if that is equal to true we're going to load more images all right so let's uh, go ahead and do that so we're going to say if so if uh, the window dot inner height so if the window dot in height plus window dot scroll y scroll y is greater than or equal to document dot body dot scroll height okay so we need to set uh, some sort of a trigger point so a trigger point let's say for example if i say uh, 100 is going to trigger bit uh, from this distance to here 200 pixels depending on whatever trigger point you set when I set 100, it's going to check for the distance between 100 pixels from here. So in this case, I'm going to say minus 5 pixels. So if you say 5, that means 5 pixels. If you say 10, 10 pixels. So it's going to calculate the distance here. Okay, so if I say 5, so it's going to be a small distance. Whenever I reach this point, it's going to generate more images. You can put whatever value that you want. Okay, so in here I'm going to say set page. So for the set page, it's going to take a callback function. So I'm I'm going to put the old old value of the set page. So in this case, we know what the old value is. Uh, so for the old value for now, it's one. Okay, so that's the current value. So it's like old value. We're going to return in here. We're going to return the old value. In this case, we know it's one plus one okay so every time it's going to in increment by one all the time every time that we uh, we want to uh when we reach this point right it's going to increment each pa uh, the page number by one every time it's going to store the old value into this old value variable so when i uh reach two it's going to store that two in this old value and then the next time it's going to say to add one it, it will be three and stuff it goes on like that okay so we also need to do uh, some cleanup as well so for the cleanup actually let's put this inside a, a variable so we're going to listen for the scroll so const so event we're listening for the event the scroll event so in here we're going to say window dot add event listener so we're going to be listening for this scroll 
and then text in a callback function in here and then that's where we put that okay so after the event well that's when we're going to do the cleanup we're going to remove the event listeners once we're no longer using it okay so in here we're going to do a callback function so here we're just going to say a window dot remove event listener okay once it's no longer needed <clears throat> so the event that we're going to be removing is this scroll okay okay so now that's that so nothing crazy yet okay so uh, let's go to the hmm, get images okay <clears throat> So in here, I'm going to create some variables, or actually two more variables, two, just two variables. Const. So this one is going to be page count. Page count. And then const the query that is responsible. Like we're going to have a search query. And then we're going to, this is the variable for that. Okay. So I'm going to go to the Unsplash website. When I go to the search for photos, so as you can see, we have the page and the query okay so we're going to say for the query it's going to be equal to a template string and then we're going to say query okay query uh, okay so query and then it goes to so we need to pass in our client ID access key Okay, and also for the page count, we're going to co uh, concat co concatenate this later on. So that's why we're doing this concatenate. It's, uh, okay, so and then we're going to do page equal to. So for the page amount, it's going to be the page state value. So this page is going to update accordingly. Whenever we scroll down, it's going to in increment by one every time. Let me actually that should be working actually. Let me inspect this when I go to the components. When I reach this point, it should incre increase the state value. When I keep scrolling, as you can see the state value is changing when I'm scrolling. Okay, it's changing. Okay, so now it's 10. So these are the page number. So that's what the page is for. Okay, so now uh, with the access key we also need to uh, that's actually we don't need to do it now the access key so now with the page count and the query okay so now let's do a simple check we're going to check uh, if there is uh, something in the query or if there's nothing in the query so we're going to say if uh, search query so if search query is close to true if there is something in the query we're going to say do something or we'll just for example in this case we just say searching searching else else uh, what what are we going to do we're just going to uh, change the URL to a new URL which to a new URL I can't say the word uh, URL okay so we're going to set that to the base to the base link and then we need to put pass in the access the access key so okay so now after the access key we also need to pass in the page count okay so if you're getting confused just go to the api documentation to see the reference of how to set up everything okay uh, the authentication you can find it here actually not here it's up here to see how to authenticate so it says client ID and then your key blah 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 okay so there it is so this is actually I'm gonna using it at the moment okay so now we have the base link access key and page count okay so inside the try now I'm going to say const data set photos okay so I'm going to cut actually no 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 all photos i'll remove this i'm going to put in a callback function 
so in the callback function i'm just going to say old photos uh it's old values i'm just going to put them in the old photos so in here i'm just going to return an array with the old photos so we're using the spread operator to copy the old photos and whatever new photos that are being generated which is all photos so it's going to be a spread operator as well so a spread operator is used to unpack or copy the the data okay so in here we're just going to return the old and the new photos whenever we reach a certain point on our website so let's see if that is working if the infinite scroll is working so when I refresh this, when I scroll to the bottom, uh, nothing happens. My mouse, uh, <coughs> nothing happens. Okay, so we want to get the image, to fetch the images whenever we affect, whenever we refresh the, uh, the page count, whenever we change the page count, so that's where we need to refetch the images so this use effect uh only works when the page the page count which is the page when it's changed so when i save this this page value when i reach a certain point uh, on this body is going to change the state and then that's when we want to refetch the new images so when i reach here as you can see it's refetching new images okay so now it's scrolling as we wanted to okay when I reach at the bottom you can increase uh, the trigger point okay it's refetching more images that's what I want but before I do that yeah, let's go to the now we need to go to the okay so we need to go to the handle submit so the for the handle submit uh, when I search I want to do something okay so let me show you uh, let me refresh this okay so when I click enter when I put something and then search it should say searching in the console should it's not saying Oh, I don't know why it's not showing searching. It should show searching. No, but don't worry. We'll fix that. Okay, so in here, I'm just going to say if in this handle submit, so if the search query, if there is something in the search query, uh, what what do we want to do? So if there is something in the search, uh, search query, I'm going to search, set the page. I'm going to set the page to 1. Okay, if there is something, if there is nothing, we don't want to do anything. And then we're going to refetch the images again. So get images, that's the function. Okay, so if there is nothing in the search query, we're not going to do anything. It seems like we have an error. I don't know what the error is. It's just a random error. So it's not going to do anything when there's nothing in the input. Okay, so we've done a little bit of validation. Okay, so now let's go back to work on the uh, search functionality. Okay, so this uh, if you scroll functionality is kind of not working properly at the moment. We just need to work more on the search functionality and then everything will come together. Okay. All right, so make sure you don't do many requests. Uh, there's a limit every hour. Okay, so let's go back to the, uh, okay, here. So we're returning the old and the new photos. Okay, so for the try and catch, I'm going to remove this. Uh, actually, yeah, I'll remove this. I'm just going to say, old photos okay so I'm going to find a way to 
uh, delete the existing data to delete the existing data when we search something we're going to say if search query if search query and page uh, if the page is close to one actually so if on page one uh, we're going to return all photos okay actually yeah we're going to return all photos okay and then we're going to say else if else if search query if there is something in the search query we're going to return return uh, what are we going to return we're going to return an array so this array is going to contain the old photos old photos and then uh, we're also going to copy the all photos as well okay all photos else if and then else in the else so for the else we're going to return another array so this one is going to be all old photos and the all photos okay so it's uh, make sure it's a spread operator because we're copying the data so if there is something uh, in the search query we're just going to return the new values or if there isn't uh, we're just going to display the old ones the old values okay so try catch in here we're just going to do cog we're going to console the error if there is anything wrong okay so we also need to construct a link for the searching so in here we're just going to change the url to do a searching url so the url is going to be different here because we're going to be searching so uh, do this base link as usual and then we have the client id as well which is the access key in this case and then after that we also want the page count okay so after the page count that's where we put our query our search query okay so this query is this one this uh, this link here it's good we're going to concatenate the base link the access key the page count and the query so we're going to concatenate that together to make that to make a single a single link okay so let's uh, see what we got when I inspect go to components let's change the value to egg enter seems like the data is fetching uh, nothing what is the egg ego nope something is not right okay hmm something's not right here all right let's see what's going on let's go oh here so if search query if search query and pages goes to one uh we're just actually let's cog this let's do cog uh, let's do all photos to see what it is because now i don't know what all photos is anymore okay so it seems like we have an error all photos okay oh i think i see Should i cancel this i want to say cog all photos okay up here just to need to double check okay so now we have 10 photos here so it's printing 10 photos all photos so we want to see to return the result of the photos so the res uh, the result we're going to say return all photos dot uh, so we're going to say 
results results the results is going to come from the api okay so i don't know what's going on with that weird error that put that's popping Let, let's cog this cog of photos Oh, let's still use this outside here to see what we have undefined all photos actually we don't need to do results we just need to return all photos okay so we're returning all of the photos yep so now return all photos And all photos okay so in here if all photos old photos and all photos okay I'm pretty sure in here we're going to get a new result cog I'll say all photos in here Uh, let me double check this error. Okay, I'll try to fix this. Enter. Nothing. Okay, I'll move this. Let's see if we have any errors again. I'll set for the egg. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. That is strange. Hmm. Okay, everything loads. Okay. <laughs> that's what i don't like about programming uh it's it's only about finding silly mistakes okay uh, i'm going to pause the video for now and then when i find the mistake i'll come back okay so i've just realized the mistake that i've made um so up here i remove this and we're also going to change the query so in here is supposed to be the uh, so this one is supposed to be the search query I didn't realize that uh, I didn't see that uh, on the last video so I just realized now and uh, also if the search query if we're searching we're going to change this link from base link to search link so we're going to change whether we're searching or not searching searching for something and then we're going to change the links based on the condition of uh, searching or not searching okay so now uh, we have this issue with the IDs so what I'm going to also do I'll go down here instead of using the photo ID that is coming from the API I'm going to do an index so here we can get the photo and also the index okay so for the key I'm just going to put that to the index you can name it index or i it's up to you and then this this issue will free to go away okay so i'm going to search for an egg and then when i hit search it seems like there's something going on photos the map is another function okay so let's check uh here return all photos oh i think there's an error here let's do cog uh, all photos seem like to be not existing all photos I'll copy I'll actually I'll cut this I'll try to display it here okay all photos okay now we have uh, the items here that are showing so what happens here then all photos 
what happens? Egg. Okay, so we still have the results. Actually, the object changed. We are uh, the photos are stored inside the results, not just in an object, but uh, the inside a result, a result uh, array now. They are no longer just photos. Okay, so in here we need to say all photos dot results to access that. Okay, so photos. So when I say egg, it should show now the results. Okay, we're accessing the results. If we don't do our re uh, results, I don't know why the API is changing like that. I have no idea. So if I just uh, search for something, uh, now they're stored in results. After I search, everything is stored in results. Okay. So, based on search, in here we're going to return. So we're going to return the all photos, the results because it's going to be based on the search. All photos, the results, and also if else if search query, if we're searching here as well, we're going to be searching. So we're going to do all photos, the results as well for this one because we're going to be searching. Okay, so now I'm going to refresh this when I say egg. Okay, as you can see, we have some eggs. Let me go to components, app, and then when I scroll, now we're generating more eggs. Okay, so when I say monkey, okay, we have monkey images. All right, so now when I hit the bottom, it's going to generate more images and more pages. Okay, we can go ego, whatever. Uh, there it is. Okay, so now uh, we just need to. Yeah, what do we need to work on again now? I think that's it for the main functionality. Uh, let's. Uh, see if we need to so when I submit this uh, when there's no data it's not working because we did uh, the validation uh, we did the validation here only we're going to search if there is something in the search query that's we're not going to refresh the images and search okay otherwise uh, nothing is going to happen okay so I'm just going to uh, add the comment some comments so I'm going to say check if uh, there is something in the query in the query okay so check if there's something in the query okay so for this URL URL will change based on whether we're searching searching or not okay uh, I think that's it for now so oh, for this one yeah check if there is something in the query okay I'm just checking if okay so but this one we're going to delete delete the existing data all right so here I'll just say refetch refetch images okay so we're going to refresh the images when the page changes Okay, so now we have uh, some comments or not. Okay, so now let's work on this uh, input field. So for the input field, I'm just going to do, I'll say down here, input. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say, okay. It's inside the header. I'll say header form 
home and then I'm just going to say input control so for the input control and then I'm going to do focus within this is the pseudo element so whenever I have a uh, the child element the child element of the input control uh, it's going to do something whenever I have a on the child element of this one so the child element of the input control is going to be the input itself okay so when I have the input we want to do something to the input control okay so in this case we're going to say width 100% so we just want to change the width to 100% when I have that input okay so input control focus within now now let's, let's see actually it's not when I have it's when focus when I'm um, focusing this so when I click the width is 100 it's going to 100% okay so when I go for a small screen uh, it's doing the same we just need to do some uh, actually before I do that I mean let's do the scroll bar so for the scroll bar the scroll bar is, is going to be inside the body so we're just going to do webkit scroll uh, webkit ah, webkit so it's going to be webkit scroll bar okay so for the scroll bar it's just going to have a width width of 8 pixels 8 pixels so we have the scroll bar uh, below that we have the track so for the track uh, we're just going to give it a background color so this will be the background color for that and then after that we have the thumb So for the thumb, uh, I'm just going to do a gradient. I'm just pasting the value here. The gradient, and then we're going to do border radius 24 pixels. Okay, I'm going to save that. Okay, there you go. Now we have a custom scroll bar. Okay. We can still do the normal search. All right. So now uh, we just need to work on some. Uh, we need to work on this input. Okay. We need to add some media queries. Okay. So let's go to the app. Uh, some media queries we can do them okay so input control okay so in the input control that's where we want to do the, uh, the media queries okay so the first media query at media screen and media screen and max width so the max width for this one is going to be uh, you can just check in the browser to see what width you want to affect the input control so I'm just going to do 1064 so for this the width is going to change from it's going to be change from 70 to 80 percent 80 percent okay so when I go back I'm going to refresh this. Nothing much is made media screen and max width. Max or oh, pixels. Make sure you put pixels here. Okay, so this it's going to resize accordingly. Okay, I'm just going to copy this value a few times two different sizes okay okay so these are the sizes which I want to affect the the search input okay so it's going to get bigger according to whatever screen size 
okay so when i go to the f110 seems like uh we need to increase this so the width is uh, let's go f110 so the width 376 okay you just need to width uh, actually i'll leave it like this uh, and then the media we just need to do the media here paste the media query okay so in here we just need to say uh, the width is going to change to 90 percent okay but the size is going to be 575 pixels 575 okay so now i'm going to f oops f12 this so now the width is bigger all right so let me see why is there is an equal equal size here inspect this main content content okay with 90 percent margin zero auto okay that's fine you can uh, try to fix any <laughs> errors that i left i left out okay so there it is so our website is uh, completely responsive okay so we can change this to different size accordingly we can search we can scroll infinitely we can do anything really uh, okay so yeah that's it for this video i'll see you on the next one